Hello and welcome to our collective worship for this week. The Lord be with you and also with you. We think about our value for this half term and our value for this half term is hope. I was just putting some things away and I'll show you what I was just putting away was my lovely old pair of walking boots. I was using them just the other day, you see they've still got mud on the bottom of them, so they probably need a little bit of a clean up. I have had these walking boots for years. In fact, they're starting to get a little bit worn out and I'm thinking I might need to get a new pair sometime soon. Maybe I'll get a pair for Christmas, you never know. But I've walked many, many miles in these boots. I think about the different journeys that I've been on and the places where I've walked Lots and lots of walks all over Norfolk and in other parts of the country too. And I've climbed up mountains in Scotland and, uh, and uh, in the West Country as well. I've walked over the hills and the moors there and I've seen lots of lovely things. And all the time, these boots have been with me. But there's something else I always take with me as well when I go on a long journey. And that is a map. I like to know where I'm going. So I always have a map with me which helps me to find where I am. I can follow it on the route and I know where I'm going and I can follow the footpaths and make certain that I don't get lost. And generally I'm quite good at finding my way with a map. I can find my way where I'm going and I don't get lost very often. So with my trusty old walking boots and a map in my hand and a few other essentials like snacks and drinks, I can normally find my way on an adventure on a walk. The story I want to share with you today is about two people who went on an amazing adventure, an amazing journey, far, 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 far longer than any other journey or walk that I have ever done. But their journey went across the desert and the important thing is that they didn't really know where they were going and they had to learn to trust God to guide them on their way. So the story happens in the desert. Now, hold on. This isn't very desert-like at the moment, is it? So let's put a bit of desert on the table, shall we? Here we go. That's a little bit better. It now seems a little bit more Deserty, doesn't it? Here we go. Now the desert is a wild and a strange place because it, it changes all the time. The wind blows and as it blows, it changes, it moves the sands around and it can be very dangerous because it's hard to find your way in the desert. It's not like the walks that I do. But as the wind blows and it changes it and shapes it, but you have to be very careful in the desert. If you don't know where you're going, it can be very dangerous indeed. The two people in our story, Abraham and Sarah. They were husband and wife, Abraham and Sarah. They had been together many, many, many years and they lived in a beautiful city called Ur. They'd lived there for a long time, but they felt that God said to them, go, leave behind your friends and your family in the city of Ur and venture out. But God said, don't worry, I will be with you. They thought about that. They'd been in Ur a long time. It was familiar. They knew their way around. But they trusted God and so they set out on a journey through the desert. God had been with them in Ur. And then they came to a city called Haran. When they came to Haran, they realised that God was still with them there, just as God had been in Ur, 
God was in Haran. And so they said their prayers and their thanks to God and they built an altar to help them to worship God there in Haran. One night, Abram walked out into the edge of the desert and he looked out across this vast desert and he felt that God said to him, Abram, one day your offspring will be as many as the dust in the desert. Now at this point, Abraham and Sarah, they had no children. They'd been together a long time. They were both getting old. But Abraham trusted God. So Abraham and Sarah set out again and they journeyed on further. For a long time and they came to a land called Canaan. Now God had been with them in Ur and in Haran and when they came to the land of Canaan, a place called Shechem, they realised that God was with them there too. Wherever they went on their journey, God was with them. And one night, as Abraham stared out into the desert, and up in the sky there was a vast starry night. Have you ever seen a night like that and you can count so many stars? And God said to Abraham, one day your offspring will be as numerous as the stars in the sky. Now, when Abraham told this to Sarah, <laughs> Sarah laughed. How can our children be as, as numerous as the stars in the sky and the, and the sand in the desert? Abraham, we're both old. We've never had children. But Abraham and Sarah trusted God and they felt that God was calling them to move on to find the best place to be and so they they left behind Shechem and they journeyed further They came finally to a place called Bethel and there God was with them just as he had been in Ur, God was with them in Haran and God was with them in the land of Canaan, the place called Shechem and they came to Bethel and God was with them there. So they prayed and gave their thanks to God. Then something incredible happened. Sarah found she was going to have a baby, even though she was very, very old. And Abraham was very old as well. But she had a baby. And when the baby was born, she was very happy and, and, and Abraham was very happy as well. And they called the baby Isaac. Now, in their language, the word Isaac meant laughter. Laughter. And they loved their son Isaac and he grew and in time he married. And although Abraham and Sarah died and were buried in the desert, Abraham and Sarah's son Isaac had children and more children and his children had children and his children's children had children and his children's children's children had grand had children and grandchildren and in time it was like they were as numerous as the dust in the desert and the stars in the sky. 
but it had been a difficult journey to set out traveling all that way across the desert when you don't know where you're going and learning to trust God all that way. For our wonderings today, two questions to help you to wonder. The first one, I wonder, how did Abraham and Sarah know to trust God? How did Abraham and Sarah know to trust God? Second question, I wonder what seems impossible to you? I wonder what seems impossible to you. Time to think and time to pray. So let's be quiet and still. Dear God, we thank you for the story of Abraham and Sarah, how they learned to trust you, and that even when times look very difficult or very unlikely or impossible, that there is always hope in those times. Amen. And we say the prayer which Jesus taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So there is the story. Sometimes that story is called the story of the great family. Because it starts off with just two people. And by the end of the story, you're talking about a great multitude. Many, many, many people. And we are all part of that great family as well. And I've told the story to you, and one day you might have to tell the story to someone else. So plenty to think about there as we continue to look at our value hope and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.